Welcome back to my channel. Now, today I seem to be standing in the middle of a rainforest here. But the reason being is in the last two weeks, I just attended the Kenya Horticultural Society flower show. And there were so many bromeliads everywhere, different colors, different designs on the leaves. And then I thought, let's talk about bromeliads because they are one of the most favorite plants for any gardener. So welcome back to my channel. My name is Alice and I'm the Red Soul Gardener. Now the beautiful thing about uh, bromeliads is that first of all they come in all shapes and sizes and they come in all different colours. I mean you have some which have sturdy leaves and they look like swords and then you do get even this one which is much slimmer but they're all beautiful. Now the thing about them, especially this variety here, is look at that is that you get the shape of a rosetta and that makes it very distinct for a bromeliad. Now the other thing is, okay, so we have our rosetta here, is here in the center is what we call a cup. Now, the thing about to understand these cups is that some of these bromeliads, first of all, they are tropical plants and it's good to understand that because the thing about tropical plants and you understand the water, the soil requirement and the light is that they live under the trees or they attach themselves to trees on top. And what they do, like air plants, is basically the water, the rain goes in here and also insects and all that. But basically, as an air plant, it actually feeds on what goes in here in the cup. Here we have another type of bromeliads that is flowering at the moment. Now look at those beautiful flowers. There's a bit of fuchsia, there's a bit of yellow when it's opened up. Again, another bromeliad that is actually flowering. So let me put that one, this one aside. Now another family of the bromeliads, again, is your Talantia, and we've talked about this in the previous episode. This is the pink quill, and again, it's an air plant. You can grow it in a pot, or else you can grow it as an air plant. And it usually has these lovely fuchsia and pink flowers at the edge. So all these are from the family of bromeliads. And this too, which is beautiful, and I did try to collect the seeds the other day, when the last season, but I just love it when it just starts to sprout out these beautiful colors and it remains like that. And look at all this foliage, it is beautiful. So I do believe I am standing in the right place, a rainforest. Now the thing about bromeliads, as we mentioned, they are tropical plants. So basically, what sort of soil, soil would you use? You can actually use whatever soil you use for orchids. Now, why I say that is basically their roots are very shallow and they actually concentrate on the cup is where it gets its water and its moisture and its nutrient and goes down to the roots. However, you can actually plant them in a pot, but the thing is, is that it's not really necessary. I've seen bromeliads like these ones actually just put in a vase and with a tiny bit of water, not actually t uh, touching the root but they do last in there because it's all the moisture, the humidity going up towards the root. So because they have shallow roots, actually when you do grow your bromeliads, you don't have to have such a, a deep pot because as we'll see later, the roots are very shallow. Also the thing to note is that uh, with these bromeliads, they don't want to have 
uh, their roots uh, waterlogged, I mean water around their roots. So you have to get a really good well draining soil so that the water gets right through because as if it does sit on the roots and the crowns are very close to the root, you will get root rot. So the light requirement, what do you need for the bromeliads? Each bromeliad family is actually quite different, but basically is that a dappled light, you know, sort of um, uh, indirect light, but at least in the morning, two or three hours of morning sun would be good for them. But basically dappled light or filtered light is good for the bromeliads. Let's look at the water. So with the water, if I can just move this one here, so heavy is when it's up on the tree and it's attached is the water or the rainwater goes and in into the cup now if you do have a bromeliad in your house I would make sure that you have just a little bit of water at the top here because that water will go straight down to the roots but then once again is I would make sure that your soil is not soggy because once again it will rot so if your water is sufficient here and you do have it dry here I would actually water it maybe once a week a little bit of water at the top and a little bit of water below however if the soil is moist what I would actually do is not really water the cup because we don't want that to go straight into the crown and get both sides giving you root rot. Now the thing about bromeliads again is that they do flower as in this one it does flower. Now what happens is once it does flower then the mother plant as in this one would eventually die but the flowers will last three months to six months so you'll see the full glory of your beautiful bromeliads. Now what happens is that once the plant does die, the mother plant which flowers, is it starts producing pups and then this is what you get. So if we look at this bromeliad here, this was the mother plant here and it has flowered and it will, it is in the process of dying but what it has produced are all these beautiful little pups on the side. So again, I have the same thing. This is another bromeliad family. So what I need to do is actually go in here. And if you see here, I have all the pups coming up because it did flower last year. So all I have to do is go in there and actually pick up these babies and actually propagate them and put them in a pot. And again, it'll clone the same plant. So now once we've identified the mother, a mother plant you have two choices because basically is after it flowers it has actually no function so a lot of people throw it away but at the same time you can just leave it there because if you do leave it there it will keep producing a few more pups so at least you'll get this sort of cluster so in the situation I am not removing her I will just leave her there and see if, if she can produce me another baby. Now the mistake I did a long time ago with bromelias is when I was planting out there my bromelias is I also started planting the mother plant and actually it didn't work because her function is dead. I mean she's gone. So do be careful that you know I mean don't waste your time planting the mother but just go for these lovely little pups here who look so beautiful and um, there you have your bromeliads. So thank you fellow gardeners for following us on this channel in my uh, tropical forest here. And we will do a part two where I will actually separate these and I'll show you how to do it. And um, yeah, and make my new pups and we will celebrate. We will also try to go in here. It's so full and I think it does need to be separated. So with all these lovely little pups coming up, I'm actually really excited. So they will be a part two on propagation.
but don't forget to like and share and also press the notification button and also subscribe it means a lot to us and don't forget too that we are on Instagram DM me I always do answer and also on Facebook I do answer and also on YouTube write your comments I do answer so thank you so much and do look after your bromelias they're such lovely plants because you can have them indoors also and um, they're stunning and they have different varieties different colors and they are a talk piece over Christmas so thank you so much and have a lovely day.